In Design Shop, we have a property for density, and what we call density is actually the measurement of the space between stitch lines that are traveling the same direction. Let's take a look at how that actually looks in Design Shop. If I zoom in really close on this little bit of the M, actually I'll zoom in even closer yet, we can see how the satin stitch is actually moving. I'm going to grab my markup tool, see if we can't make this a little bit easier to understand. So we have stitch lines that are traveling in one direction. So this top line might be traveling in this direction. And then it has to travel back to get to the other side. Then it travels back in that same direction. So we're going from left to right, from right to left, and then from left to right again. What we call density, which is up here on the object property bar, is actually the measurement between those two that are traveling the same direction. So that makes it pretty easy on satin stitches. We can basically measure the end there. Let me go back and grab a tool that will allow me to change some of these densities. So right now we have a density of 4.0. If I change this number to maybe 3.5, you'll notice as soon as I hit enter that these stitches get closer together. So everything just scoots a little bit closer together. The default density in Design Shop for a satin stitch is 4.0. Is that a good density? Is that a bad density? It really depends on the length of the stitch. And embroidery, length equals loft. The longer the stitch, the more it stays up out of that material. So the longer the stitch, the more those stitches kind of need their friends to, to hold themselves up and look nice and even. The shorter the stitch, the lighter the density or the farther apart those stitches need to be, otherwise they'll start to kind of buckle all over each other. So if I have something that's going to be changing the, the width of that stitch line, such as a script, like let's say Diane's script, use this font a lot when making examples because it's a good example for a lot of different things but this one has a density that is or a pardon me a column that is nice and narrow here we've got a thicker column here narrow thick narrow it would be really difficult to choose a density that would be the same all the way across that alphabet so instead of doing something like that where we're choosing one that's even all the way throughout the form what we can do is use auto density. What auto density does is it bases the density on the stitch line length of the elements. So if it's narrower, the stitches will be farther apart. If it's wider, the stitches will be closer together and be able to hold themselves up and look nice. If I look into the properties of that, and I do that by clicking on this box with the ellipsis in it, you can see just how that's being based. So it's, it's measuring it in column widths, I would, I would say that that is the same as a stitch line length, so across the form here. If it is 10 points wide, it's going to be a 4.7 density. If it's 20 points wide, it's going to be a 4 point density. So as we get wider, the space between the stitches gets smaller, so they get closer together, hold themselves up, look really nice. The default density table that is in here works fairly well for a lot of things, and it's going to work mostly for satin stitches. Auto density is used, again, mostly for satin stitches because those are the ones that are going to be changing that stitch length. If I were to use this on a fill, even though the fill gets much wider, the stitch lengths are all going to be about the same because you set a stitch length and then it just drops a needle penetration every so often. If I were to use auto density for that, auto density is measuring off of the stitch line length, so the whole width of the form. So where it's really, really wide, it's going to crank that density down even though your stitch lengths aren't changing. And it can actually cause a fill to ripple in the fabric, especially after you wash it. So auto density, a great tool for satin stitches. It will adjust as the width of the element changes. But for a fill or a standard step fill, you will probably want to stay with a standard density. And the default density for a fill is set to 3.8. You may need to adjust that a little bit based on your fabric. If you have a sturdy fabric that is very, very smooth, you might be able to go a little bit lighter or have the stitches be a little bit farther apart and save yourself some stitches and sew out time. If you have something that's a little bit rougher and needs a little bit better coverage, you may want to bring that down just a bit. Instead of changing density, what you may also consider doing is adding underlay for those options. And underlay is discussed in another video. 
if you have a tool that you or if you have an element that you're using auto density on and you like the range of that table but the the overall density isn't effective for your needs you can slide that whole table up or down so I like the range but I don't really like how loose or dense something is I can go into top stitching and change my density still by changing this percentage this percentage adjusts the density based on this table so I can slide that whole table up or down based on my needs so if I have my density set to 120 percent it is going to make all of these stitches be farther apart so I hit apply and now my stitches just got farther apart so it's sliding that whole table up or down with auto density with your density settings you actually have a lot of control over how far apart your stitches are and the overall looks of your design so you should have a fair amount of control over your density